Right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to a new week. Uh, let's begin this time with a word of prayer. Uh, Kennedy, can you please lead us in prayer? Thank you. Let's pray. Your heavenly Father, Jehovah, thank you for this great day that you've given to us, Father Jehovah. I commit everybody into thy hands, Father Jehovah. You know, teacher, Pastor Emmanuel, but whatever is going to teach us, Father Jehovah, let it be all and blood. But to all the students, Father Jehovah, still not try, Father Jehovah, that we must in this place. We will teach that we can learn together about your truth and your word. That is life and our demands, Father Jehovah. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Kennedy. Okay, uh, so last week we uh, we moved into chapter 10. We looked at planning and execution. Uh, some of the important points that we you know studied about was uh, execution is the key uh, to management, right? So for example, we have only plans and we don't execute the plan, it's of no use, right? Or we have some brilliant ideas, or, uh, you know, technology, innovation, all these things are made available. But if we don't execute what plan we have made with the tools that are available, it's just going to be plan on paper. And something that's on paper will remain the same if it has not been executed. Right. Uh, so we looked at how we must determine the counsel of the Lord. Uh, the Lord will always, you know, while we are brainstorming for ideas, uh, we may get many inputs from many people in your team. Determine the counsel of the Lord. Right. What is what is God's plan? What is God's purpose uh, for this organization? For uh, the 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 probably the project that is coming up. What does God want me to do? So. Determine the right counsel of God. Get the right people involved in planning, right? So uh, uh, maybe in ministry, uh, it's, it's time to make a decision. Get the right people involved. People who are tenured, people who, uh, you know, uh, have a passion for the vision. They want to see the organization grow. They want to see the ministry grow. Get them involved, right? Now, finding the key people and getting them involved uh, you know, it's it's very important, right? Because uh, remember that even in ministry, uh, you know, there, it could be one person who started the ministry, right? the senior pastor would have started the ministry. But as the years go by, uh, you know, it's always it's always good to form a team and get right people involved in in planning, uh, because. You know, uh, sometimes in ministry we feel, okay, I can do all things, meaning I can plan, I can make the decisions, and I will execute the decisions. Uh, now, initially, when the ministry is small, that's all right, right? Maybe 30, 40, 50 people, it's all right. But uh, once we begin to grow above 50, it's good to get a team, get people involved in planning. Uh, and, and that way, you you know, you get ideas, you get inputs from others. Now, here's another thing. Creating a team or forming a team uh, is a process, right? People come, people may leave, uh, but stick to that plan of having a team, right? We also looked at being preempt to the unexpected, which means, um, you know, when you're in an organization or even in ministry, plan ahead. Uh, you know, it could be five years ahead. It could be 10 years ahead. It could be one year ahead as well. But it's very important to plan ahead. Uh, uh, why? Because when we plan ahead, we, we will kind of have an idea as to where we want to see our organization ahead. Right? Where do I want to see the ministry? Now, maybe we started in 2020, it's 2022, uh, two years have passed by. Uh, and so what you can do is you can also plan strategically, like 22 to 2025, here's what I want to see my the ministry uh, areas. I, here's what I want to see. I want to see these kind of things, activities happening in the church. These are the programs uh, and these are events that we can do. And plan ahead, look ahead preempt uh, to the unexpected. What if 
you know our church grows and there is more than 100 people there's no place in our uh you know in the hall that we are currently located at so how do we uh look out for a bigger place uh, oh, okay so later on as the ministry grows we will we will want to record our meeting so uh, what do we need we need a good camera we need people who are equipped and trained in you know uh, recording and dealing with equipment so when you look ahead uh you know you you set certain things and plan now, let me give you an example right <clears throat> uh so for example uh the church is maybe 60 70 people right the ministry and you've had this in your heart that you know i want to record our sermons and put it on youtube and let people watch it and let it be a blessing to people now what are the things we must do as a leader first things first you're looking ahead right so one day i want to see my you know i want to see the sermons recorded i want to see uh you know our worship being recorded put on youtube and people being blessed so you may not have the you know the the equipment you may not have the resources you may not have the people but when you plan ahead you know the lord will send people and as the ministry grows you know you have maybe youth joining your team joining the church and then you ask them hey uh, what do you do and you know if they are interested in uh, you know audio or video recording and things like that you get them on board you you put them uh, you know give them opportunities and so that way you're looking ahead and you're saying okay three years down the line this is what the plan is but i'm i'm you know planning ahead i'm looking at how i can achieve those things so from here uh, this is where we stopped let's move on to the next point uh chapter 10 planning and execution i'm on the next point some seasons are more intense than others. Okay, uh, Abraham has a question. Pastor, please, what happens if people are not passionate and you have to drive the leaders too because they are too busy? Do we pull them? Okay. Sorry, I got a little bit of cold, so just bear with me. Uh, yeah, that's a good question, Abraham. Uh, here's the thing that what we would do is we must remember that passion for something or you know a zeal for something comes from within right so for example uh you know you may be passionate about music but you may not be passionate about swimming right so that's something that comes in yet in leadership one of the things uh, the signs of a great leader is getting people passionate about a, a vision now we must understand that for them to feel that way, it takes time, right? So, uh, so for example, you know, if if you've got uh, people in church who are very laid back, or you know, they just want to come on Sunday and they don't want to do anything extra, they just want to be part of Sunday services and go back home. Uh, but they may be regular on Sundays, um, or you have leaders who are you know busy and you know, they can't be there for everything. Um, we don't pull them. Uh, down like we don't say okay because you're not able to come uh, uh, you know I can't give you this responsibility but uh, we give them opportunities we like for example if if a leader is constantly not available or constantly unable to fulfill his tasks in the ministry he may be working in the corporate sector but he's constantly not been able to you know uh, serve and uh, the leadership role that has been given to him he's constantly not able to fulfill the task now the right thing to do is to call him or her and speak to them and say okay see uh, we understand that you are working in the corporate sector it could get uh, you know really intense work could be strenuous and all the other things but we'd also like to see the ministry grow and since you are a leader uh, you have certain responsibilities uh, as a leader even towards the church so let us know whether you feel you know you're able to because there are many times 
many leaders they themselves they will come and tell us uh, you know i i feel discouraged because i'm not able to give the, my best to the church and as a leadership role so can i take a break for 3 months or 6 months and we readily agree to that uh but there are times when people want the leadership role but they don't want to do anything right they want to be known as a leader but uh that's when you uh, have to take action you can uh, when i say action you mean uh let them know the importance of also what you're looking at uh from your point of view in the ministry so sit speak to them uh let them know that you know uh, probably you can give them a time frame in 3 months if uh if you're unable to if I, if we see that as a leader you're still unable to uh fulfill the responsibilities and you know get the church to uh, you know to to minister to people being available for them if we see that you're not able to do that uh, it would be great if you could take a break you know concentrate on work for some time uh you know get a change of your mind and then come back so abraham the right thing would to do would you know just uh you know to drive them there are many different things that we can do uh but then again passion is something that is instilled inside uh but very important uh don't you know immediately just you know ask them you don't have a passion leave no uh god can you know put that passion in their heart for uh, as they begin to serve as they begin to uh minister in the church so uh give them time is what i would like to say abraham yeah yeah okay uh some seasons are more intense than others uh, can somebody read uh proverbs 10:5 any one of us proverbs 10 and 5 mm, yeah proverbs 10:5 he who gathers in summer is a wise son he who sleeps in harvest is a son who causes shame thank you pastor yeah thank you abinas yeah so uh, he who gathers summer is why uh, gathers in summer is wise but he who sleeps in the harvest is a shame uh when the time for action is has come we must be put into action there will be times of hard intense work there will be times when things are going all right right so in these seasons like for example when you look at a church right ministry when are the times you know uh we are very occupied we have a lot of work or we have a lot of things a lot of events christmas christmas is a good example right so you got uh the whole year we do a lot of events and all that and then when you know things like easter and christmas comes there's this additional you know events and additional things that we like to do in the church and so those seasons are more intense there's more planning there's more uh you know uh getting together team effort and all of that so even in the corporate sector there will be seasons where things are intense there will be seasons when you know you know uh, work is just going on normally so be ready for both uh you know don't don't feel that oh why everything was going smooth now suddenly there's so much of work uh, uh how do i manage this i i can't do this don't give up uh very easily there now remember that some seasons are intense some seasons are just regular work so let them pass by in their seasons right now execution uh execution can be messy and disruptive uh let's read proverbs 14:4 Proverbs fourteen four. Proverbs chapter fourteen and verse four. Okay. Uh, I'll. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Proverbs fourteen four. Where no oxen are, the true is clean, but much increase comes by the strength of an ox. Yeah. Thank you Abinas. Now what we're trying to say here is when we have certain plans and we are working on those high level plans we you know executing those plans there will be times when the smaller things will look very unimportant. Right? Now when smaller plans look unimportant it can turn out to be messy. Things can turn out to be disruptive. Now let me give you an example in terms of ministry. right so as a leader 
you may be looking at, okay, uh, we have this uh, Christmas programs, this Christmas week. We have all these events set in place, house visits, carol singing here, carol outreach programs, um, no, uh, malls, carols at the malls, uh, carols in the church, uh, and then we have big Sunday, all these events. And so we are thinking about how, you know, we're going to achieve all this. We have the teams placed. And now smaller things may be disrupted. Maybe there is somebody in the church who just needs a prayer, who's going through a very difficult time, going through a sickness or uh, just lost a loved one. Now, the, the challenging part would be, you know, we're only looking at, okay, these are the events for this week. These are the plans for this week. And then we forget about the little things which could really make, uh, you know, someone's day, or which means those small things which can also, uh, if not looked at, can be messy and disruptive. Uh, some Somebody in the church may be hurt and just needs prayer or needs comfort. Uh, we may just ignore that and look at these, you know, the carol events and all of that. So as a leader, make sure that especially in times when there is, uh, when there's a lot of plans, a lot of, you know, events and there's, you know, a uh, uh, lot of, you know that you're going to be busy, make sure that the smaller aspects of the ministry is looked after well. You know, as, as a pastor, sometimes, and some of you may be already in the pastoral role, uh, your church members sometimes want only the pastor to pray for you. They feel comforted that way. So not always you can tell, you know, tell the uh, youth leader to pray for you or, you know, you tell uh, this other uh, leader, the church leader to pray for you. Sometimes they don't feel comforted. So we must be there for them. Right. Uh, so being available for them is very important in times of execution. Next point, stay focused and avoid distractions. Proverbs 12 and verse 11. Let's read. Proverbs 12 and verse 11. Proverbs 12 verse 11. The one who stays on the on the job has food on the table. The witless, the witless chairs, whims and fancies. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Avinas. Right. The witless chases whims and fancies. The word whims and fancies means they go after things that have, you know, they're not focused, right? To everything they feel they want it, right? Now, focus is a very integral part of execution, right? Uh, and, I, and I believe that uh, when you have focus on specific goals, you will be able to achieve it, right? Now, the problem is there will be distractions. Even to the smallest, you know, aspect of uh, learning, it can be a smallest reason or the smallest uh, distraction that can take us away uh, from a specific goal. Let's take this simple example, right? If we want to learn an instrument, example, we want to learn the guitar. Now, if you're focused on it, you know, you, we start off, we take a couple of lessons maybe, or you feel, okay, we can just go online and learn. And so initially we can start it. Now, the key is to stay focused. Right? Uh, we can very easily start something, but when there's distractions, it's easy to, you know, so for example, you're learning the guitar. Initially, it's not going to be easy, right? There's a lot of you know, things that you have to do. There's finger exercises and, you know, it gets boring. You're not going to, we're not going to get everything, you know, the chords right at the very first, uh, you know, week or it takes time. Now, what happens is we may get distracted or, oh, there's, there's, there's other options. There's, you know, uh, I can listen to music. I can go out and play with my friends or I can, vis I can visit other people. Uh, I can go for a drive or I have other work to do. Uh, and so there's a lot of other distractions. So for us to achieve goals, we must stay focused. 
right? Now, I just gave the example of uh, you know, learning an instrument because a lot of uh, you know, strat- uh, uh, surveys say that 90% of, of people uh, who take an instrument, they don't finish learning it. Why? Because uh, they give up very easily. Uh, and when we have a, a vision or a focus ahead of specific goals that we have set, we need to stay focused, right? What about, you know, we've got these uh, new year resolutions that we make. Uh, there are times you say, okay, I'm going to do this, 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 this. And we don't do it, right? Uh, or some of us may do it as well. So that's wonderful. That means we are focused. But if we don't, that means there are things that have come in uh, that has avoided us, these distractions that have avoided us to stay focused on our goals. As leaders, here's a very important point that we must remember. We need to stay focused, right? There will be people who will come and say, you know, you don't have to do this, you don't have to do that. Uh, And there will be, you know, the enemy will come with all kinds of distractions. We have to stay focused as leaders. See, you see a goal, you set a goal, picture that in your mind. Uh, For example, some of you are probably learning an instrument, wanting to play in church. Have that picture in your mind. One day, I want to see myself leading the worship in church. Right, And, And so when you see that in your mind's eye, you begin to avoid these distractions. You say, okay, I, I want to see this. This is a focus. This is a goal that I have. Or some of you want to see yourself as a manager or a or a senior manager. So you, you picture it. Stay fo- focused on the goals. Now, it's also very important that, you know, remember what distractions are and what distractions are not, right? Now, if you're planning something, you're, you're, you're you know, uh, preparing or, for example, you're training yourself in a certain thing that you have been a certain goal. And if you have small children and they come and say, uh, you know, they're playing with you, don't chase away your children and say, no, I'm set my goals. You're a distraction. No, they're not a distraction. Right? They are children. And as, as a parent, we need to be there for them. Right. Uh, so we must understand what is a distraction, what is a non-distraction. Right. Um, if there are times you'll have to go look after your parents, be there with them, go ahead. Right. They are not distractions. They are people who, who love you, who cares for you. And it's our responsibility to look after them as well. When I say the word distractions are things that are whims and fancies, right? They just don't profit anything in our lives. So avoid those distractions. Next point. Don't just talk, act, but act on what is really important. Proverbs 14, 23. Yes, could one of us please read that? Proverbs 14 and 23. Okay, I'll go ahead and read. Proverbs 14, 23. In all labor, there is profit, but idle chatter leads only to poverty. You know, in in execution, action is very important. So action must be prioritized uh, that are, you know, so don't just talk about it, act on it, right? It's wonderful to plan. It's wonderful to put it on paper, share it with people that you know, but don't just be talking about it, right? So for example, if you, you know, if you feel that you want to, I'm just giving this example, right? If we feel that a person wants to start his ministry, his own ministry, right? Or his own organization. uh, And He's been telling this to his friends. You know, one day I will start the organization. I'll start my own ministry. Uh, and so he's telling it to his friends, his family, his loved ones. Everyone are saying, oh, great, you're going to do this. That's wonderful. And he gets inputs from people or other senior pastors. And 
uh, people who care for him. They give him some inputs and ideas and strategies. And so he's got everything. But imagine he keeps talking about it. He or she keeps talking about it, but doesn't do anything about it. So what's going to happen? After a year, they're going to ask, hey, uh, you know, you, you plan to start your own ministry. How is that going? Uh, oh, it's, 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 yeah, it's still on paper. Okay. So they'll say, okay, two years down the line, uh, hey, you had planned to start your own ministry. What happened? Uh, it's, uh, no, it's not yet. Uh, okay. Imagine three years, four years, five years down the line, people ask you, okay, so what are, what are you doing in the background to make sure that you start what you, you know, the vision that God has put in your heart? Uh, not really. I'm sitting and praying about it now. That means it's only talk. The Proverbs here, in Proverbs it says, in all labor there is profit. But if it's just idle chatter, there's nothing. There's not going to be any outcome out of it. There are many, many people who I've met in my life uh, where they've said, you know, I want to do this, 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 this. Uh, especially in ministry. Uh, said, I want to uh, be a pastor, I want to start my own ministry, but I didn't see any effort taken by them. They would be at home just sitting and praying the whole day or you know, not doing any work and their parents are upset about it. And at least, you know, like for example, if you know, just start a small group or a cell group or go out on the street, start some something small. And when you put your hands to the plow, which means when you Put your hands to God begins to bless. If we only have the plan and if we only talk, what can God bless? We can't, nothing, right? But if we plan and we put our hands to labor, God will bless that, right? So one of the things that we do in leadership and as leaders is avoid idle chatter. Avoid it, right? Uh, you don't have to you keep talking about things. Uh, uh, you know, there are some people who who say this, right? They, hey, this guy only talks. I've not seen him do anything about it. He he has big talks, right? Uh, but execution is nothing. Uh, I, I don't see uh, any of what he's saying coming to pass. Now, that's an embarrassment. That's a failure from our side, right? So we must remember um, don't just talk, but put our hands to the labor, right? Engage your team, because together, everyone achieves more. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9 to 12. Yes, could one of us please read that? Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 to 12. Or shall I read it? Yes, please, Rupa, go ahead. Two are better off than one because together they can work more effectively. If one of them falls down, the other can help him up. But if someone is alone and falls, it's just too bad because there is no one to help him. If it is cold, two can sleep together and stay warm. But how can you keep warm by yourself? Two people can resist an attack that would defeat one person alone. A rope made of three cords is hard to break. Thank you. Amen. Sir. Thank you, Rupa. Uh, yes. So the whole point that this writer here, uh, Solomon, is bringing out is have a team, engage a team. Two people are better than one, right? And so we also talked about that, right? So in in terms of planning, in terms of execution, when the ministry organization is small, you have to take matters into your own hands, right? So. But as the ministry or the, the organization grows, you have to you get people involved, get a team involved. Remember that the greatest sign of a leader is not how many sermons he has preached or how many uh, sessions of worship he has led. The greatest sign of a leader is how many other leaders he or she has raised up. That is the greatest sign of a leader, right? Uh, because when we have a team, we, it's a joint effort. All of them come together, work together. Everyone takes ownership of the goal uh, of the work that has been you know, assigned. Now picture this. Imagine you're a church of 200 people 
and you have no leaders now there's something wrong in that even if we are 50 people you should have a few leaders in the church right that if we don't have leaders uh, in the church and it's just one person who's it's like a dictatorship kind of a situation it's very wrong uh, it's always good to have make a team, form a team, even if it's two or three more people, right? Uh, I've shared the example in Mangalore. We were just 10 people, but, you know, we opened a WhatsApp group and had, you know, about four or five of them as, you know, integral part of planning and coordination, right? And even now, now that we're about uh, 80, 70, 80 people right now, uh, so we all get together, we plan. But it all started off when they were 10 people, right? 10, 10 of us, four or five of them were in the, we, you know, we got together, put our ideas together. And so we always feel that, you know, the church has grown. Yes, firstly, because God has done, God has, you know, brought people together. And two, what I noticed was the core team, the, the five of them who was, who were part of this, you know, the initial team, they were encouraged. They said, Hey, uh, now we are part of this team and we are involved in making decisions and planning for things in the church. So as as a person who's in this team, I have to make sure that I do the best for the church. And I began to see a change in attitude. You know, they were willing to come early. They were willing to share to people about events, worship evenings. They would bring people. Uh, and, you know, they weren't doing that before. But now they were you know doing that even when times when there was you know the failure when we have failed failure meaning uh, we pl planned an event and we didn't expect the results as much as we'd like so we all take responsibility say okay this is what happened well, you know i remember this one worship evening we had planned uh, somewhere in the middle of 2018 that was we were about maybe 20 people in the church uh, so we planned a worship evening and, you know, we made invites, hundreds of uh, invites and we made the e-invite. We went on the streets, gave out invites to students and families. Uh, and we really felt that at least, at least, you know, two, three families and a couple of students would come. And it was on a Saturday. And then, uh, you know, the worship evening, it was about five o'clock and I really, and our team, like all of us expected, you know, at least uh, a few, you know, 10, 15, 20 pe new people to join us. Uh, but it was very sad, but there's only two of us. Only two of us were there. Uh, but we did the whole one and a half hours of worship. We just prayed and we closed. Uh, but then after that, we did join together and we we decided we talked about it we thought okay what went wrong was it was it the timing was it the day um so we need to find out so we began to call the youth we you know so as a team we found out that saturday is not a good day to have events the saturday evenings monday to friday students are busy saturday they have a half day and they want to just go home and rest because the entire week they have been busy in their colleges and you know hectic studies and so we understood okay so saturday is not a right day so we we came up with different kind of strategy we all as a team said okay friday evenings is a good day because they finish on friday uh and they feel that it's a weekend they will be willing to come so we moved saturday evening worship to friday evening uh and so we realized okay the college gets over at about four o'clock by the time they come, it'll be, you know, take rest, travel and come. So let's move the worship evening from five o'clock to six o'clock. So we moved it from five to six. And then the next worship evenings, we started seeing a lot of youth coming. A lot of families started coming as well. So we realized, okay, uh, you know, it's because it was not one person's effort. Uh, we engaged together in a team. We planned. Uh, we all got inputs from different people, right? Uh, uh, and then they, we all came up with this decision and it worked because we saw progress in the church. We saw that people were willing to come, 
spend time in worship and eventually they began to attend church and uh, and and they were you know uh, plugged into church that way so engage your team you may have a certain idea but the other person may have a whole different idea uh, on achieving that same target or achieving that same goal right different minds will have different strategies so it's good to have a team the next point is accountability when things are going rough when things are going tough be accountable you know when especially when times well you know uh, progress is reviewed right uh, you have a yearly review uh, probably a half yearly review or a yearly review in the corporate sector and you and if there if you're you know if you are a leader or even if you're working under some leadership if you see that there's no progress uh own up be accountable right uh now the whole cycle of reporting and reviewing planning could happen on a weekly basis could happen on a monthly basis quarterly basis half yearly basis yearly basis uh, so different organizations have different kind of uh, structure but here's what it is be accountable don't give excuses in the sense if we are in the leadership team in the probably children's ministry right uh, and we've been assigned some work uh, you know prepare material for the children's uh, you know prepare a uh, course material or probably prepare uh, kind of activity sheets for them uh, and then your senior pastor says you you have to prepare this so that uh, when the month of uh, june july comes once we restart children's church these are the things that needs to be done and we can use these um, this material now imagine you've been told three months in advance but and we sit and we try on the last 15 days we are sitting and you know trying to uh, complete the task and the task is not completed it's just a half-hearted work and we send it to our uh, you know our senior leaders and they say this is not okay now during the review time they say you know these are things that were not done now don't give excuses uh, but be accountable. Say, yes, I, I, these are things that I should have done. Somehow I didn't do it. It was my negligence. Uh, but can you give me another opportunity? I will, this time I will. And in ministry, usually they give, you know, there's grace, they give you an opportunity. Uh, but in the corporate sector, we don't know, right? Uh, but the safest time, thing to do is be accountable. Uh, even in the corporate sector, if 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 it results in uh, you know something that could be drastic ahead in the future, it's all right. But it's always good to be accountable. Say, okay, yes, I should have done this, but I didn't. And mostly, nine out of ten times, uh, if you are accountable, a good leader will always give another op opportunity. Uh, they will not uh, uh, you know just ask us to leave and all of that. Right. So when the going gets tough, be accountable, be, uh, uh, you know, accountable to the organization, to your leaders, to the people around you and be accountable to your performance. Uh, it's very easy when we think about ministry, you know, to just take it as it is. Uh, and I think when we think of ministry, we need to raise up our level. Right. Uh, we need to stop thinking that, OK, it's all right. Uh, it, you know, God is there. God will do everything. No, no. Um, sometimes we have this saying, right? Oh, God knows my heart. Uh, God knows why I'm doing this. You may not understand, but God knows. So all that is good. I mean, God knows everything. But God has also set, uh, uh, you know, leaders above us because we need to be accountable to them. Right. Uh, there were people whom I know of who said, you know, uh, I'm accountable only to God. God knows my heart. And so I will, uh, now that would be the wrong thing to say, right? Uh, God has placed leaders among us. Uh, we are to be accountable uh, to everything that we do. Right. Uh, next point. Some lessons learned 
are more valuable than the profit gained. Let's read Proverbs chapter 3, verse 13 to 17. Proverbs 3, 13 to 17. Proverbs chapter 3, 13 to 17. Uh, Proverbs 3, 13 to 17. Happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. For her proceeds are better than the profits of silver and her gains than fine gold. Amen. Pastor, you are muted, I think. Sorry, uh, it's three to 13 to 17. Uh, verse 17, till verse 17. Oh, sorry, Pastor. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. The 15 says, She is more precious than rubies, and all things you may desire cannot compare with her. Length of the day is in her right hand, and in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are way her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Abhinas. So now the process of execution is a great teacher. Right now, I'm sure all of us have a story where we can say, hey, this is a lesson I have learned. Uh, probably I learned it the hard way or I learned it, you know, just watching people. I learned this lesson because this person did something uh, and it went, uh, it, the, the, the outcome was disastrous. And so I learned I will never do that. Right. And so in life, we all learn lessons, right? Uh, it's a great teacher, right? Something that we, you know, sometimes we fail or we, we, we fall down in a certain area in our life and we learn a lesson when we say, I wish I didn't do that, but I know that going ahead, I will not do the, make the same mistake. So the experience and lessons from each strategy is invaluable, right? Uh, uh, so we, uh, you know, more than success, this, the lessons that we learn is so valuable because we are learning it on our own. It's not on paper, right? It's not something that you're reading and you're, you know, um, putting it into your life. No, uh, when, when, certain lessons we learn in our life that is more valuable than profit gained. Make a note of times when we have failed, make a note of it, uh, write it down, write down times when we have succeeded, times when we have failed, times when, you know, things were very difficult yet, uh, you know, those lessons, those seasons taught us lessons, right? Make a note of it uh, uh, and learn from both the positive and from the negative right uh, and especially in ministry we'd love to say this uh, we will all go through challenges we will all go through positive negative there will be things that work out things that don't work out uh, learn from them right now uh, if we don't learn from them the Bible teaches us that it is uh, you know uh, it's like digging a pit and we ourselves falling into it, right? Uh, when we fail or there is a, uh, a season where we have fallen down and we stand up again and we don't learn from that, then it's like digging a pit and falling into it once again, right? And last point. Above all else, let God be in charge. Uh, let's read Proverbs 16 and verse 3. Proverbs 16, verse 3. Proverbs 16, verse 3. Put God in charge of your work, then what your plan will take place. Thank you, Christopher. Yes, put God in charge of you. This message uh, translation is really nice. It says, put God in charge of your work, then what you've planned will take place. 
Commit your plans to the Lord, just like point number one. Commit your ways, your plans to the Lord. Trust in Him and know that He shall bring it to pass. Right? When God is in charge of your work, God knows how to make things come to pass. He, when we trust in Him, even when it looks like an impossibility, He will bring it to pass. Right? Uh, so, even as God is teaching us many things, right? It could be a, a, a small, you know, a small role that you're doing in your church. Uh, commit it to God. Say, God, help me to do well in what has been assigned to me. Remember, the Lord Jesus taught us to be faithful in small things. And when we're faithful in small things, God will give us bigger opportunities. And I'm sure all of us, you know, uh, we've all probably been serving in the church. Maybe for many years, you've just been in the background. Nobody has noticed your hard work. And, you know, you're just continuing to be faithful. God will open doors and God will honor you. God is watching. Right? So don't be discouraged if people don't call you on the stage, clap for you, or people don't, you know, uh, recognize you. It's all right. You know, sometimes we may feel hurt. It's part of our natural being. But look at it on the positive side. Say, God, I know God is the rewarder of our work. Our labor in the Lord is not in vain because he's watching. So even if it's something as meager as cleaning chairs, uh, or, or setting up the book table. Nobody may see us doing all these things, uh, but trust in the Lord and He will make things come to pass. He will grant us the desires of our heart. Right. So we'll stop here. We'll pick up from chapter 11 uh, tomorrow. Uh, and any questions? Any thoughts? No questions? Okay. All right. Uh, let's close in prayer. Uh, let's, could one of us please close in prayer? Maybe uh, Mangi, would you mind closing in prayer, please? Yes, 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 Pastor. Thank you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we You, you chose us, Lord. You, when you called us, Lord, when you created us, Lord, you gave us uh, each one a gift and each one a calling, Lord. And it's only you, Lord, who knows who you've called us and how we will achieve it, Lord. Because without you, Jesus, we, we are powerless, Lord. We are unwise, Jesus. We do things according to the way we see it fit, Lord. And we pray, Father, that you... You'll come in our lives, you'll come in our hearts, Lord, so that you can direct us, Lord, so that you can give us wisdom, Jesus. How to plan, how to, to carry on project, how to start ministries, Lord, how to do everything that you've called us to do, Lord. And we pray, Father, that you have all the glory and people will see that your name will be glorified and that's only you are the only way, you're the only truth and the only life, Lord. And we Will be example to not only people in the our churches, Lord, but people in the world, Lord. We thank you, Father. Thank you for your grace, and thank you for your Holy Spirit that will guide us. In your mighty name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Mangi. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Have a great day ahead. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye now. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you. God bless. Bye.